Hi guys, um, Mr. Hescox Life Science class. We are picking up with the second half of the types of biomes and their characteristics. The first one, your question from yesterday, what is the main producer of the tundra? The best answer here is lichens, the symbiotic relationship between a fungus and an algae. Um, you also have some moss, some sh small shrubs, and some grasses. So we have a couple of biomes left to do. We have finished the terrestrial biomes and then do the three aquatic type biomes that we're going to talk about in your review. 14.4 is your homework. My favorite, it's where we live, the temperate deciduous forest. The temperate deciduous forests are made of trees that shed their leaves in the fall and then they grow back in the spring just like what we are experiencing now if you go to the woods now you'll see that many of the trees are getting their leaves back these are usually found just south of the coniferous forests and sometimes you'll get some coniferous trees mixed into this temperate deciduous forest um, coniferous forests are your pine trees evergreens Coniferous are often called broadleaf trees. The big broad leaves allow them to go through a lot of photosynthesis. They're usually referred to as hardwood trees, and they're very, very good at, at growth, and they make for very, very diverse environments in the forest. Uh, most deciduous forests get between 75 and 150 centimeters of rain. 150 centimeters is Oh, about four or four and a half feet. When the leaves fall in the fall, they decompose and they give a really good fertile soil. The deciduous forest has the second best soil compared to the grassland, which has the best. Um, the rainforest, which we haven't got to, actually has the worst. Um, things that you'll find in the deciduous forest, insects, spiders, snails, um, all kinds of organisms living in the canopy, such as squirrels and things like that. You have mice, you have white-tailed deer, raccoons, foxes, thrushes are a type of bird, woodpeckers, finches. Um, because the deciduous forest, as we're, we're in that area, there's a lot of snakes and frogs. You have a lot more amphibians, um, you have newts and salamanders. Newts are the orange ones, salamanders are usually black. Then we go on to the tropical rainforest. The tropical rainforest is very much endangered in the world today. Um, the tropical rainforest gets at least 200 centimeters of rain. So that's over six feet of rain a year. It's very, very warm because it's located near the tropics. So it's very, very warm. Um, by far the most diverse of all biodiversity. Um, you have many, many types of plants, many, many types of trees. You have some plants that never touch the ground. They just live in the canopy of the trees. Um, things like lilianas, which are vines, and orchids that grow in the trees and never really touch the ground. Um, you have whole ecosystems of organisms that live up in the trees versus the ones that live down on the ground. Parrots, toucans, all kinds of birds. Um, more insect species than anywhere else on Earth. More frogs and lizards and things like that snakes than anywhere else on earth ocelots are a type of predatory cat uh, boas anacondas all those things that tend to crawl up and eat birds and in different monkeys of the rainforest very very biologically diverse but because of the canopy it's very very dark on the forest floor of the rainforest the rainforest has the worst soil of all because the the, the plants never die off in the winter so they never stop taking the nutrients out. And then you throw in all of the rain. Rainfall can actually wash away nutrients from the soil. So one of the biggest problems to the rainforest is what we call slash and burn. It's been a problem in third world countries for years. Many farmers are literally burning down acres and acres and acres of the rainforest to make farmland. But because the soil is so poor, it doesn't work for very long, so they burn down more forest. Then that soil goes bad. 
then they burn down more core. Well, deforestation, or it's called the slash and burn technique. It only works for a short period of time. Some scientists think that we may have maybe half, if not even down to a third of what the Earth's actual rainforests are left. Oh, what a beautiful picture that is. If you've ever been to the Bahamas, this is what it looks like. Three types of water biomes. They're all referred to under the whole marine biome. Marine literally means salt water. Uh, salt water is generally around 30 parts per million, sometimes 32 parts per million. Fresh water is zero parts per million. And then if you go into estuaries, it's usually around 17 parts per million. Um, this is the Earth's largest biome. The marine, the saltwater biome, is actually broken into different tiny ecosystems based on the depth. You have tidal, you have the deep ocean, there's like the benthic zone, and it all depends on the amount of light reaching each one and then whether or not you have tides. Along the ocean shore, you have to deal with tides because some organisms along the coast are underwater and then they're out of water. Like if you've ever seen barnacles on a boat dock at the ocean, they have to be able to deal with being in and out of water. Clams, sea stars are often in that intertidal zone. There's plenty of fish that will ride with that. The producer, the number one producer of the ocean is phytoplankton. Phytoplankton live within basically the first 10 to 20 feet of the ocean. They don't live any lower than that. They are photosynthetic plankton. They're often eaten by these things called zooplankton. Zooplankton are animal-like plankton that feed on the phytoplankton. And then the fish like to eat the zooplankton and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, if you were into larger, more open water, you'll get the dolphins and the whales. Now dolphins and whales move around. Um, you know, the so whole thing with the ocean, you have sharks and mackerel, tuna, swordfish, just literally thousands and thousands of types of fish, each type of fish adapted to a certain particular part of the ocean, from the deep water fish to the more higher up fish. Now this is interesting. This here is an estuary. An estuary is where fresh water and salt water mix. The mixture of fresh water and salt water is called brackish. Um, this here is the Delaware Bay. It's a fairly large estuary. This is the largest estuary on Earth. This is the Susquehanna Bay, or not the Susquehanna, the Chesapeake Bay, which is fed by the Susquehanna River. The river that we have here in Bellwood, which is the Frankstown branch, runs into this. So the water that runs down past the cemetery will eventually, eventually end up in the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay actually gets its name from an Indian term that means Great Shellfish Bay. If you've ever been to the bay, whether you went to Baltimore or if you've been to Virginia Beach or if you've crossed over it going to Ocean City, there's lots of crabs, there's lots of seafood, and it's just a huge place for biodiversity because you have freshwater organisms you have saltwater organisms, and then you have some that prefer that brackish water. The Chesapeake Bay is relatively shallow. It's only like 10 to 20 feet deep at the very deepest part. Because it's not that deep, we get grasses growing on the bottom. And these grasses are really, really, really important because grasses are producers. So they produce food for the organisms there. And grasses, unlike phytoplankton, give shelter. They give places for organisms that would be prey organisms to hide. You know, oysters, clams, crabs. If you've ever been to the bay, everything at the bay, everyone loves blue crabs. They are absolutely delicious. But this is the bay here. This is like Baltimore up in here. When I first started teaching, I lived right there in Salisbury. And what happens to the bay, the tides come in and it pushes salt water clear up all the way up the bay. And you can literally watch it run. This is the Wicomico River right there where I used to live like two blocks from. You could watch this every day, twice a day, you could watch the water flow clear up out of the ocean, 
up the river and you would have this brackish water. Fresh water, which is what we have around here. Lots of fun, lots of organisms. Lakes, ponds, streams, and rivers. Within fresh water, there's a lot of limiting factors. If you're a uh, trout, you like cold water, fast moving water. Trout are very streamlined, kind of like the shape of an airplane without its wings. That allows them to cut through fast moving water with little work. Some types of organisms like bass, like bluegills are kind of fat and pudgy. They do not fight streams and rivers as well. Different types of organisms have adapted to whether you're in a stream, a pond, a lake, or a river. Brook trout need lots and lots of oxygen, where brown trout need less oxygen, and they like slower moving water. They also tend to be bigger, too. Bass like slower moving water. Bluegills like slower moving water. Um, but then there's different types of fish that can kind of go between the two. Um, if you're an organism living in a stream, it's usually pretty fast moving. There's very few plants living in the stream. So you have to have adaptations to live in a stream. It could be very streamlined like a trout. If you're a plant, you have roots that reach into the bank of the stream so you don't get washed away. And then insects that live in a stream, which is usually what trout feed on if you're into if you're into fly fishing and all, you know all the different types of streams and things like that. You either bury in the bottom of the stream or you have some sort of sucker or some sort of way to bury yourself under a rock. Now fish, when those insect larvae hatch, will tend to feed on them. If you're in a pond in lakes, you get algae, you get duckweed, you get different types of grass. All of those are producers for, and you get little fish in there. Little fish attract big fish. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that takes me to the end of our biomes. So far today, we did temperate forest, which is the deciduous forest where we live. We did tropical rainforest, which is a definitely endangered. We talked about the marine biome, which is mostly saltwater. We talked about the estuaries that are a blend of saltwater and freshwater, where a river comes to the end. That's your brackish water. And we talked about the different types of freshwater. So make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys get these review questions done. And until next time, I'm Mr. Hescox. You guys be good and be safe, and I'll be seeing you.